leaving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, you know my soul cries out, Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, you know my soul cries out, Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all. So cries out, Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all He has done for me, you know my soul. Cries out, Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do praise the Lord for all of His goodness and His mercy that He's shown toward us. Truly, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, I often say that there's no telling where we would be. Amen. The Lord has been good to each and every one of us, and we should praise him. Praise him for our salvation. Praise him for our deliverance. Praise him for all that he has done. Yes. Truly, the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in our Bible study, uh, we want to uh, remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord would save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And we also want to remember uh, those that are going through in their bodies and their mind and their spirit. Amen. We know that God is a healer, don't we? We know that God is a deliverer. So we certainly do want to pray on that wise because he said, ask and he shall be given. Seek and ye shall find and knock and the door shall be over. And the Bible tells us that the fervent effectual prayer of the righteous, it availeth much. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we believe God, don't we? And we believe, we believe his word. So uh, are there any particular prayer requests? Thank you, Lord, that before we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I want to ask the church to stand. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lord. Saints, don't stop praying for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying. Hear me your cry. For the Lord has promised and His word is true. Just keep on Don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, hear the old cry. For the Lord has promised, and His word is true. Just keep on praying, hear that. 
answer you, saints, don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry, for the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Just keep on praying, he'll answer you. Let it be hard, pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we certainly thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord, for starting us on our way, giving us a mind, Lord, to come out to the household of faith, to hear of your word. We thank you, Lord, for how good you've been to each and every one of us. And we ask you, Lord, that you continue to hear our humble cry as we make known unto you our request. Remember men and women and children everywhere. Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. We ask you, Lord, that you deliver each and every soul, hallelujah, that is under the sound of our voice. Remember, Lord, those that are sick and afflicted and going through in their bodies. Remember those that are in the hospitals, Lord. We ask you to remember those that are going through in their mental state. We ask you, Lord, that you bless those, Lord, that are going through in their physical state and those that are going through in their financial state. We ask you, Lord, that you bless the church exceedingly and abundantly in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on today. Hey, glory, hallelujah, help your way. Thank you, Lord. Grant the door of utterance, Lord. Grant us ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. We pray, Lord, that you bless even this election, Lord. Hallelujah, let it be sure. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, let there be no unrest. Hallelujah, uprest and violence and fighting. In the name of Jesus, let it be a trans peaceful transference of power. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you bind this coronavirus. In the name of Jesus and all of the deadly diseases. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord, for the edge of protection about us, Lord. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, as we dwell in the city of safety. Hallelujah, we lift you up, Lord. We magnify your holy name. We praise you, Lord, in the midst of. And Father, we thank you. Hey, glory, we praise you. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. It's good to praise him. Thank you, Lord. It's good. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to go as far as I may say I'm crazy, but it's good to be afflicted sometimes. Uh, hallelujah. Because it gives you an opportunity to see the handiwork of the Lord. It helps you with your faith and your walk with the Lord. Amen. It humbles you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So it's a lot of benefit. Hallelujah, it's a lot of benefit. Thank you, Lord. So we praise God. We thank him for his magnificent work that he has shown toward the children of men. And there's no uh, like Lord God like Jehovah. Amen. Amen. So as we get ready to go into our Bible study on today, we were um, looking last week into vision. And that's what we'll be continuing on with on this particular week, and um, our, our quiz this week is found in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter number 3, amen, and as um, our tests, our quizzes are getting ready to be handed out, amen, and as we get ready to prepare ourselves, and the purpose of these quizzes is, I'm not just doing it uh, just as a perfunctory uh, 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 thing or just as a thing to uh, do. I'm doing it so that we can glean and gain some knowledge and understanding so that we can uh, literally study our lessons because when we study the Word of God, that's what's going to help us. When we apply these words and these scriptures to our hearts and our minds, that's what's literally going to um, cause us to be mature and to grow. And God has us in a place now that he wants us to start working out 
uh, our salvation, fulfilling our vision, equipping ourselves for service and community uh, ministry. And we have to know the word. Amen? Uh, we've got to apply that word. So don't take this as a light thing. Don't take this as um, um, something that the Pastor Quinn is just doing. I'm, 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 my steps are ordered by the Lord. And uh, as, as the Lord, uh, how can I say it, as the Lord directs us, he doesn't direct us uh, into frivolous um, activity, <laughs> as I call dummy moves. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So as we are looking at our quiz on tonight, Thank you, Lord. Coming out of the book, well, I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to shout right now. Thank you, Jesus. As we're coming out of uh, 1 Samuel, uh, chapter number uh, one, three, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel, chapter number three, and I just want to go over uh, the quiz just briefly, quickly. It says, define timeless truth. Amen. Define the meaning. When we talked about it last week. Uh, what timeless truths are, or what that means. And then, uh, looking back on our uh, previous lessons, um, I have here, define wisdom. So everybody should get that question right. And uh, next question is, define vision. Define vision. What is vision? And According to 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 1, who did Samuel minister before? Who was Samuel serving? And that same uh, chapter and the same verse, and he says, the word of the Lord was blank in those days. The word of the Lord was blank in those days. All right? And then we have here define the meaning of no open vision. Define what it meant, what the scriptures meant when it said that there was no open vision. Amen. And when God called Samuel the first three times, he said, Samuel said, blank, because he did not know the Lord. Neither uh, was there blank of the Lord, blank unto him. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I like to kind of get a little tough sometimes. All right. Eli told Samuel to say uh, blank uh, for thy servant here. Against whom did God speak against in the vision he gave to Samuel? Who did God speak against in the vision he gave to Samuel? All right. And here's one everybody should get. The next three questions, everybody should get that. Because we've already reviewed that extensively. Uh, divine understanding. Define knowledge. And the last one, uh, name the three stages of learning. Name the three stages of learning. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, just give you just a couple more minutes. Uh, not a couple more I want you to finish that up, and then um, uh, we'll go over that um, in about 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord. And the reason why we're doing this again is so that we can uh, apply this word, apply this word to our life. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He said, my people perish because there's a lack of vision, a lack of vision, a lack of vision. And that word perish means uh, they live
live without restraint. They have no focus in their lives. People need to have a focus, a reason uh, for, for, for living. Amen? You got to have a reason to get up in the morning and get out of bed. If you don't have that, you're laying in bed all day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And that, and that purpose and that reason gets you up. All right. Uh, let's go over the lesson real quick. Uh, you you got you got a lesson, brother? Yeah. Oh, okay. You got a pen and everything? Yes, sir. Okay, all right then. Get ready. So you write write down the answers. All right. Good. Thank you, Lord. We should all have we should all have some writing material. We gave out last week some uh, some journals. Amen. So you can take some notes and some pens. Gave you one of the Christian ministry pens. I I was I was actually forced to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I, I like pins. I like to hold on to them. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Duck, she likes pins too. She likes to hold on to them. I, I guarantee you, if you look at her purse right now, she got about 10 or 12 of them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, as we look at our lesson here, uh, going over our review. It says, define timeless truths. And I'm just going to expedite time and just give you the answer. And uh, define di the, uh, timeless truth. A timeless truth is a, uh, uh, a reoccurring theme or a reoccurring observation found throughout the Bible. You know, that's true. It's a reoccurring theme or a reoccurring observation that's found throughout the Bible that is true. And uh, like, like love. Love in the Bible is a timeless truth. You'll see that theme throughout the Bible. Faith uh, is a timeless truth. You'll see uh, faith throughout the Bible. So that's where the timeless truths are. Thank you, Lord. And we should glean, we should hold on to those timeless truths because it's a reoccurring theme. Uh, the next scripture, next scripture. <laughs> uh, the next word says define wisdom. And I put down the ability to apply knowledge and understanding to life situations. If you have anything similar or close to that, you're on target. All right? Um, define revelation. Revelation. Um, uh, no, vision. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I messed up. Uh, Define vision, vision, and vision is a revelation from God, a prophecy of, of his word, uh, 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 a revelation from God, and it's found in God usually gives it through a prophecy, amen, in this respect, the vision that we're talking about um, uh, right now is found in the word of God, it's his revelation, it's a revelation of God's word. God's will. All right. According to 1 Samuel uh, 3 and 1, who did Samuel minister before? It was Eli. Right. Eli. And the next one says, the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Amen. Or rare. Rare. Precious. Rare. All right. Define the meaning of no open vision. Uh, closed revelation of the word or prophecy of God. It was a closed, a closed revelation of the prophecy or the word of God. When Eli called Samuel the first three times, Samuel said, here am I. Alright? Because he didn't know the Lord. He didn't know how to respond to the Lord when the Lord was calling him. So, uh, his mentor said, uh, um, oh, uh, because he did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed. So the word is that answer, and, uh, and the word of the Lord was not yet revealed. He, Samuel had no vision or no word of prophecy of the Lord, so he didn't know how to respond. When you don't have a vision or no understanding of the word of the God, you don't know how to respond when God calls. That's why it's important 
to have a revelation or a vision. Eli told Samuel uh, to, to, to say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear. Amen. He told him how to answer the Lord. Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear. Samuel was just saying, Here I am. <laughs> and God said, I know where you are. <laughs> you ain't lost. So he had to, when God called, he had to say, Speak. Amen. When God calls you, you, can, you have to say, Speak, Lord. Not here I am. Amen? Timeless truth. God wants you to, to, to speak, acknowledge yourself. All right? Uh, against whom did God speak against in the vision he gave Samuel? And the answer there is Eli. Eli. All right? Define understanding. Um, if you have anything close to this, the interpretation of the facts. Understanding is the interpretation of the facts. Uh, define knowledge. And I put here uh, the accumulation of the facts. And uh, name the three stages of learning, knowledge, understanding, and uh, receiving. Amen. That's the process of learning. Amen. You have to uh, have a knowledge of it. That's what we're gaining now uh, in our Bible study. And also we go through the pra practice of understanding. That's the uh, being able to perceive, all right, to interpret, amen? And then you have to receive it. Uh, when you receive it, you apply it, amen? Y'all with me? Amen. amen, all right, all right, good, good, all right, amen. All right, so y'all keep them pages because you'll see them again, <laughs> amen. All right, so tonight, tonight with the time that we have left, uh, roughly an hour. Thank you, Lord. I want to delve into our Bible study. Y'all ready? Amen. 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 Um, our, our Bible study is, is continuing on with vision. It's continuing on with vision. Today, I want to specifically talk to you about the vision of Jesus Christ. The vision of Jesus Christ. And it's important for us to understand vision in this respect, how I'm using it in our teaching class. Because vision can be applied and said uh, many different ways. But um, today I want to use it in, in our study is it, as it relates to the work of Jesus Christ. The work of Jesus Christ. Your vision, um, I want y'all to get this. Your vision deals with your work. Amen. The assignment that God is giving you. And if you don't know your a vision, if you don't know your assignment, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 29, uh, 18, I believe it is, uh, without a vision, the people perish. In other words, they live an unrestrained life. They, they, their, their lifestyle is chaotic. Amen? They, 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 they live without boundaries. They, they don't have a focus. They, they don't have a purpose. Amen? So you've got to know uh, your work. You've got to know the vision that God has for you. Amen? The assignment that God has for you. And today we want to talk about the, the assignment and how Jesus handled his assignment and how Jesus understood his work. Amen? Y'all with me? Amen. All right. So as we, um, um, and then uh, what I want to say also too about when you have a vision and you know your work assignment, you know, sometimes you can veer off. You can veer off from your assignment. Then when, when you hear it, uh, it'll bring you back. Amen? So it's like a compass. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you are supposed to be going in one direction, and you veer off from that direction, you say, oh, how, what am I doing here? Uh, I should be over here. Uh, why? Because you know what, what God has assigned to you. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? So it brings you back to your focus. It's like the prodigal son. 
when uh, the prodigal son lost his vision, what he was supposed to be doing, uh, being a good child unto his father, amen, working with his dad. And he decided that he was going to take everything that he had, amen, and, and live riotously and spin it all up. And when everything was gone, the Bible says he came to himself. Uh, that's, that's what vision does. It brings you back to yourself. Uh, and he said, well, hey, I'm supposed to be with my daddy. Uh, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to humble myself. And the father saw him from afar off because he realized that that's my son and he's supposed to be with me. Amen. And he ran to him. Y'all know the story. Veer off from what uh, God has called you to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's how that's how vital vision is. And then when you line up with the vision, when you line up with God, then God supplies. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll never go lacking because God will supply. God supplies. God delivers. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if you Going one way, uh, God wants you to go another way. God ain't going to follow you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants you to follow him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let's move on. Y'all with me now? All right. Go with me over here to the book of, of uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number one. And we're talking about uh, tonight. I want you to get into your hearts and your minds. How Jesus responded to his vision, amen, or his work, or his assignment, amen. And, and I want us to uh, be able to see now, if Jesus did it that way, we also must do it this way, amen. So Hebrews chapter number one, in verse number one, it said, God, who had sundry times... And in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now verse number two, notice. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, that's Jesus, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Now notice Jesus' assignment. He was, he was the heir of all things. Amen? Notice verse number three. Who being the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person uh, and, and upholding all things by the word of his power. Notice his assignment. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels uh, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, uh, Jesus' assignment was to be a prophetic voice for us. Because you got to understand vision. Vision deals with revelation. Revelation in what? The, the Word of God. And Jesus is that Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. He had spoken unto us in past time by the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, uh, and, and we can go on, amen? But in these last days, Jesus' assignment is to speak prophetically to us, amen? Y'all remember when Jesus was, was, was getting ready to go and be offered as a sacrifice, and they met with him on the uh, Mount of Transfiguration. There was Moses, and there was Elisha, huh? and there was, there was God, there was Jesus, and there was the prophets. Amen? God's complete plan of salvation. Amen? And Peter said, uh, I say prophets, or I meant to say apostles. Thank you, Lord. God's complete plan of salvation. And Peter said... Thank you, Lord. He said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us build a tabernacle for the three. Uh, and then uh, God, God moved and moved uh, away Moses and Elijah. And he said, 
This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Amen. Hear ye him. So we uh, uh, we have to uh, study about Jesus. We have to hear the word of the Lord from Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and the scripture says that, that as we had just read, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, God who had sundry times and in diverse manners uh, spake unto us in time past by the prophets. God spoke to us by the prophets. But now God is narrowing the field. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is Jesus' assignment to speak unto us. Amen. He notes, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he have appointed heir of all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So he's speaking unto us by Jesus Christ. And that's Jesus' assignment. Jesus' assignment is to speak to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the, the power of the Holy Ghost as well. The Holy Ghost, when you have the Holy Ghost and you're spiritual, uh, it, it brings back to your remembrance the words that Jesus has spoken. Amen? The Holy Ghost doesn't speak of himself. The Holy Ghost speaks with the words of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. My God, I'm getting a little excited. All right, now, let's, let's, let's go here then to the book of uh, Luke. Luke. Chapter number two. Uh, let me get there with you. Luke chapter number two. Luke chapter number two and verse 49. When you have it, say amen. amen. Oh, y'all good. I like it. Notice, this is the scripture. This is the text. We're in. Uh, uh, Jesus was left uh, or stayed behind in Jerusalem when his parents uh, were headed back to uh, Galilee, Nazareth, Galilee. And they realized that Jesus wasn't there. Amen? And, and this is Jesus at a young age. A young age. And he realized, they realized that he wasn't there. So they traveled back and they found him uh, uh, with the doctors and the lawyers asking and answering questions. And the Bible says they were amazed and astonished at his level of wisdom, his level of understanding. Amen? Now notice Jesus' response when his uh, verse uh, 48. 48 says, and when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Uh, why, have you, uh, why hast thou thus dealt with us? And she said, Behold, thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. Now, what I brought you here is verse 49. Notice, he said unto them, How is it uh, you sought me? Huh? Wish ye not that I be about what? My father's business at a young age. Huh? Jesus was about his father's business. He had the vision within him and he got busy immediately. Amen? We have to be about our father's business. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You've got to be about the vision. I want, to, I want to suffice it to say this. What, what God has assigned for you and, and you knowing and understanding Jesus Christ is everything. Huh? It's everything. You have to come to a point where nothing else matters. Amen? Because people can be deceived. People can be tricked. Amen? Say, well, I got to do this. Well, I got to do that. Huh? But the Bible says, seek ye first huh? the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. And he said what? All these other things shall be what? 
And we have to prioritize our lives. Amen? Now, what I mean when I say that is this. Is that God knows that we have to raise our family and our children. Am I right? God knows that we have to work. Am I right? God knows that we need healing in our bodies. God knows that we need food on our table. God knows everything that we need, doesn't he? Have not God said, I provide everything that you need that pertains unto what? Life and godliness. Huh? So everything you need is in Jesus. Huh? Anything that you don't need is outside of Jesus. So if I'm seeking Jesus with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, will I not have everything I need? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Am I, am, am I making sense here? Thank you, Lord. Because some people or some spirits will try to tell you that, that well, you're being too spiritual. Huh? Well, you're, you're being too holy. Huh? Or, 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 or why, why are you living like that? They don't take all of that. Huh? And those are carnal-minded people that don't have a vision. Those are carnal-minded people that don't realize that, that in Him you live. In Him you move. In Him you have your being. Who am I talking to today? Hallelujah. If I get off track, I'll lose out. What profit of a man to gain the whole world and what? Lose his soul. And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? When you believe God, that you believe everything you need is in him. Huh? That he will supply. Hallelujah. You'll stick to the vision. Am I right? In, in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter, we're not going there. Don't go there. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I feel like I'm being led by the spirit right now. In Deuteronomy chapter number 6, it tells you the Shema prayer. Hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. This was marriage. Love the Lord thy God. Love him with all your heart. Uh, with all your might. With all your strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Love him that way. Hallelujah. Then he says, this is what you ought to do when you love God. Teach that then to your children. Uh, pass that down because that's what's necessary. That couple shot. That's what's needful. Amen. Uh, so you've got to envision yourself loving God that way. Amen. Amen. Now notice Jesus. Jesus said in that verse uh, 2 and 49, how is it that you sought me? Talking to his parents. Wish you not that I be about what? My father's business. Now, uh, go with me then to Luke. Uh, just go way over here. Well, you better go over to the 19th chapter of Luke. And we're going to talk about that. Luke 19, talking about my father's business. What is the father's business? That pertain to Jesus. Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. Amen. We have it, say amen. amen. All right, Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. And uh, Jesus is uh, dealing with uh, uh, Zacchaeus. Amen. Y'all know that Zacchaeus was a little short tax collector. <laughs> Jesus told him, I'm going to abide at your house today. And Zacchaeus was happy. He was excited. I'd be happy too, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Come, Jesus. And I ain't going to worry about, I mean, you know, I want my house to be cleaned up, but you know, I ain't going to be like Mary. No, who's that? Martha. Yeah, I ain't going to be like Martha. Amen. Coming about many things. I'm like, come on, Jesus. <laughs> All right. All right, so we see here then, uh, verse 19, Jesus is giving us insight 
here, uh, into his work. Amen? Into his work. Notice what he said. And Jesus answered unto him. He said, this day, what? Salvation is come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham. Talking about Jesus. Verse uh, 10 is what we want. Notice what he says. For the Son of Man came to what? To seek and to save that which is what? Lost. That was the vision that God gave to his son Jesus. Amen. He was on a, a, a reconnaissance mission to seek and to save. Amen. Recon. To, to seek and save who? Those that are lost. Amen. Jesus wasn't lost. <laughs> we sing that song. Uh, I found him. You didn't find him. <laughs> he found you. Amen. Huh? He found you because you were lost. Notice. His mission was to seek you out. He sought you out. Huh? And he found you. Just where you were. See now. Uh, uh, the old bishops would say. You dirty nasty self. <laughs> he found, then he cleaned you up. Then he cleaned you up. Oh, he cleaned us up, didn't he? Thank you, Lord. When, when we received him, he cleaned us up. Amen. He sought us out. Found us where we were. Dead in our trespasses and sin. Amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and he sought us and he cleaned us up. Saved us. Sanctified us. Didn't he? Hallelujah. Made us whole. Huh? And, 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 and let me say it this way so we can get a greater understanding because not all of us are all on the same level. Amen? Thank God. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And I don't mean that as a slight at all. Thank you, Lord. But, but those as many as received him, huh? the Bible says to them gave he what? Power. Some people utilize the power more than others. And the amount that you use his power that he gives unto you determines the level of your maturity, your growth. Amen? Uh, how you're walking with him. Hallelujah. Some people on a kindergarten level. Huh? Some people are on a first grade level. Amen? Thank you, Lord, and so forth and so on. And, and it's not based on, as we have learned last week, it's not based on your age. It's based on your uh, application. How you receive them. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. Now, now I can say this. I'm going to say this and uh, just, to, just to give you some, some type of understanding. Amen? That this thing is real. That this thing is true. And, and I, got, I got Pastor Duck here. I got Sister Louise here. And I got my wife here. They can all testify to, to, to what I'm about to say. Thank you Lord. That, that, that when I came into the body of Christ. I sat down. Amen. Sat down and received of the word of God. Amen. And, and really went forth to apply that word to to, to will it, where, where it afflicted my soul. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and also, it, it affected my family. Thank you, Lord, because sometimes I had zeal without knowledge. Amen. Thank you, Lord, but, but I was determined to live whole. Amen. And, and this is what I want to say. That, that, that in that process, they saw me grow. They saw me mature. They saw me being used in the ministry. Huh? More so than those that have that, that, that have came up with me. Sometimes more so than those that have been there a while. And it wasn't based on my age. It was based on my level of dedication unto the Lord. Y'all with me? And I'm, and I'm not, y'all know me. I ain't, I ain't trying to 
uh, puff nothing up. I ain't trying to toot my own horn. But, I, but, I, but I, what I'm trying to show you is, hallelujah, uh, leading by example, that what I'm saying is true. I lived it. Faith, my dad is. That was that word last week. Faithful. Amen. You got to be faithful. If you are faithful to, to God and his word, he'll elevate you. Amen. Just be faithful. Thank you, Lord. I remember um, when, when I had uh, got ordained. Just got ordained. And um, that same week, uh, one of the one of the brothers uh, uh, son died and and the pastor at the time was in Florida or somewhere out of town on vacation there were other ministers there amen there were other ministers there that were there longer than me I got the call to do the funeral never did a funeral before never never did it before but studied it Huh? But never did it before. But but I got the call. Why? Because I ain't saying the other people were not faithful, but because God put it in the heart huh, of a pastor to give me a call. Amen. That's God. God will promote you. Huh? God will elevate you. Just be faithful. Just be ready. Amen. For God to use you. All God wants to know is your calendar open and are you available? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Just be willing. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And you know, uh, I'm going to say this because I'm a boasting in the Lord. Everything that I do on the first run, amen, I'm scared and nervous. I'm shaking in my boots. Amen? And I'm crying out to the Lord, help me. Huh? But 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 when I get up there, something happens. Amen. Transformation happens. God, God, God does something miraculous. That that He shields all my nerves and my nervousness, and it looks like I've been doing it for years. Huh? Then after I'm done, I gotta go to the bathroom and something like that. Now I'm nervous. Huh? But it's God. Amen. God. God will do it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He'll be with you. He'll show you. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Thank you. God is just like that. So, so, so what am I saying? You got to be faithful to the assignment. You understand that? Thank you, Lord. Don't, don't allow people, don't allow situations, don't allow conditions. Y'all want y'all to hear me? Don't allow conditions and people and situations to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Yeah. Pastor Duff? I was just going to say, uh, the saints don't know that preachers go through things too. Oh, yes. Uh, and people think that we're not people. Uh huh. They think that we're subhuman or something like that. Yeah. That we have to get out there and preach. Uh huh. And preach through the, some of the worst conditions we're going through in our lives sometimes. Yeah. can't do it. God ain't what you can't do it. That's why he told Timothy uh, preach. Be instant in season. Out of season. He was telling him uh, uh, when you got a headache, preach. When you don't have a headache, preach. When they're giving you an offering, preach. When they don't give you an offering, preach. If your house being foreclosed, preach. Huh? <laughs> Thank you Lord. You follow me? Thank you. Whatever the situation is, be faithful. How long? Unto death. Huh? Death don't excuse you because you got to be faithful unto death. And you got to do it before you die. Amen? Man, I feel like I'm teaching some bishops up in here now. Oh, hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. This is good stuff, ain't it? Hallelujah. So, so you got to be faithful. Amen? Serious about what God has called you to do. Amen? Jesus was faithful, wasn't he? Yeah. Huh? So we're in, now notice, notice, notice. Uh, when Jesus was talking to Peter, well, he was talking to all of the disciples, but Peter answered the question. 
Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Peter said that I like the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Peter got the vision. He got the revelation about who Jesus is. We got to catch the vision. We got to catch the revelation about who Jesus is. Now note, Peter got deterred because he didn't understand the total vision. Because shortly after that encounter, uh, Jesus told him that the Son of Man had to suffer and to die and give his life as a ransom. Huh? He was receiving more of the vision, but he rejected that. You follow me? And, and he said, Lord, be it far from you that you do that. He was, he was literally trying to take Jesus off of his mission. Huh? And because Jesus was so dedicated to his mission, he recognized it. He said, uh-uh, get me behind me, Satan. He realized that Satan was using him. Huh? God was using him when he received the revelation about who Jesus was. But he flipped. Huh? We can flip sometimes. <laughs> who am I talking to here? Um, you can be godly one moment and hell bound in the next. Huh? A double minded man is what? Unstable in all their ways. And notice, because Jesus was so dedicated, I'm going to try to get this, to his assignment. He said, get me behind me. Huh? Huh? Because you don't savor the things that be of God. There are going to be people that are going to try to sway you. Huh? And they're going to be inhabited by the devil. Huh? To, to move you away from the state of what God has called you. But you've got to be ready huh, to call them out. Get behind them. Amen? People offer you drugs. Get behind them. People offer you sex. Get behind them. People offer you money. Get behind them. Amen? People offer you companionship. Get behind them. Uh, people offer you position, out of position, where you're supposed to be. Get thee behind me. Amen? Y'all with me? My God, this is the Holy Ghost here. The angel, this is the Holy Ghost here. I said, this is the Holy Ghost here. Uh -huh, hallelujah, my God. All right, let's move forward. Y'all ready? Thank you, Lord. Now notice then, Jesus said, we're talking about how dedicated Jesus was to his own assignment. We've got to be dedicated to our assignment. That's a timeless truth. Amen? Because you'll see it down through the years. Everybody that God used was dedicated to their assignment. Amen? Am I right? Thank you, Lord. Everybody, that God, even, even the wicked folk that God used, they were dedicated to their assignment. Amen? Thank you, Lord. The angels are dedicated to their assignment. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. You got to be dedicated. Get them, get, get them. Uh, I, I ain't coming at nobody, uh, but I got to say, it. get all foolishness out of your mind. Huh? Put foolishness away from you. Amen? That, that you don't have to be dedicated. Huh? He said the diligent soul shall be what? Made fat. And God is a rewarder to who? Them that what? Diligently seek him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and God, I told, I told somebody, thank you, Lord, they were talking to me and uh, they was using excuses. I said all excuses are, are lies. Huh? Every excuse we come up with is a lie. Now, don't get me wrong. We, we, we are, y'all know when y'all making up an excuse. I know when I'm making up an excuse. Amen. Sure, uh, there's going to be situations that come up where we can't perform because we're human. Amen. Uh, y'all with me? But I know when I'm making an excuse. When I can do it, uh, something in me telling me not to do it, uh, and, I, and I make an excuse for it. Amen. Uh, don't, well, let's not deceive ourselves. 
Y'all, y'all, y'all go ahead. And I'll be, I'll be, I'll catch up with you, so to speak. Amen. Because there, he had to meet this woman at the well. Huh? There was a need. There was a purpose. Jesus was always true to the need and to the purpose. Amen. Now, timeless truth here. Uh, the Samaritans were outcasts. The Samaritans were 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 were, were half breed Jews that the Jews didn't fellowship with. If you fellowship with them, you were considered an uh, uh, ungodly person. Amen? But notice, Jesus came, stayed true to his assignment to save who? Those were what? The Samaritans were lost. Uh, so he was willing to go through the ridicule uh, so that he could complete his assignment. Your assignment is not always going to be popular. Huh? You're going to face some ridicule. Some people may cuss you out, call you unholy, ungodly, talk about you. Huh? Thank you, Lord. I had, I had a preaching assignment somewhere, and, and, and uh, uh, those that were in holiness uh, looked down on me for taking the assignment. Say, Pastor Quinn did flip. <laughs> All of it. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, but, but, but did I care about that? No. I ain't care. All of it. You follow me? Why? Because if they talked about Jesus, they're going to talk about you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All of it. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now notice this. Um, uh, verse number, what did I say? 34. 34. Okay, good. Thank you. Verse number 34. Here we go. Verse number 34. Notice what Jesus said. Talking about his vision. Keeping with his purpose. Notice what he said. Uh, verse 33. He said, therefore, said the disciples one to another, have, have any man brought him ought to eat? They were asking Jesus, because uh, if that's Jesus, did anybody bring you something to eat? Now notice what Jesus said. He said unto them, <laughs> my meat is to what? Do the will of what? Him that sent me in what? Finish this work. That should be our mantra. Jesus said that, he was saying that my meat huh, is not that temple food, what you're talking about. Huh? That doesn't sustain me. Huh? What sustains me is when I'm doing the will of him that sent me. Huh? And to what? Finish. Huh? He that began a what? Good work in you. Huh? He shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Huh? You, you can't start out on this thing and give up. Throw in the towel. <laughs> you come too far by faith. Huh? Leaning on the Lord. You gotta finish the work. Finish the assignment. Huh? It is God that has sent you. It is God that has called you. It is God that has justified you. And it will be God that will glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Paul said, in him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Oh, you got to fight a good fight. Hey, Shabbat. Yeah. 
that. Yeah. Uh, a righteous man falls seven times uh, and gets back up. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Get back up. Thank you, Jesus. In order to be a good fighter, you have to have that complete vision. Yeah. Like you said, the person that got upset with you when you preached at another church. Yeah. You did that. You didn't. It didn't matter what anybody else said. No. You had a complete vision of what you needed and had to do. Absolutely. Hey, I must needs go through Samaria. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's like something rising up in you. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter because you're, you're so open. You, God has given you something. Yeah. He's given you a vision. Yeah. Most performed. Yeah. And, 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 and he gave you the vision. He also supports you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Huh? So if you got a desire to go on the glory, you got to finish your work. <laughs> that sounds kind of strange, though. <laughs> you know, no, none of us want to die. Huh? But I got to finish the work. Can't give up. Can't give up on the top. Am I right? Hallelujah. My God. No retreat. My God. Yeah. God wants us to retreat. Now. Amen. Thank God. So you put on the whole armor. Huh? So that you can be able to do what? Stand. Amen. Never retreat. There's no surrender in God. You don't surrender to the end. Am I right? Yeah. And you don't give me in to the end. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Listen to that song. That's a true song. We need to sing it all. Yield not to what? Temptation. For temptation, for yielding is sin. Huh? Each victory will what? Help you, some others to what? Win. Fight manfully onward. Oh, y'all know that song. Y'all know that song? Oh, well, we got to sing that song. Amen? When you, when you get a chance, Google that song. Huh? That song is true. It puts some backbone in you. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, let's, let's move on. So, oh, Jesus. Time getting away from me. All right? So then, Jesus said, my need is to do what? The will of what? Him that's sitting in to do what? You'll see that on the, on the quiz next week. All right? Now, go with me then to St. John 17. This is Jesus' prayer. Prayer. Praying to his father because he's about to die. Amen. He didn't did all the preaching. He didn't did all the teaching. Now he's about to die. Verse 7. Verse chapter John chapter 1, verse, sorry, John chapter 17, verse 1. He says, These words spake Jesus. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. <laughs> glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life huh, to as many as thou hast given him. What was Jesus' mission? To save huh, them that are what? Lost. Amen? Notice. And this is what? Eternal life. That they may what? Know thee, the only true God, and who? Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen? Jesus, in the beginning, remember, in the book of Hebrews, chapter uh, number 1, verses 1 through 3, God has spoke unto the prophets, Huh? But now in these last days has spoken unto who? Us. Huh? Us through who? His son, Jesus. And Jesus, he gave us an understanding of the Father and himself. Amen? He left us that. Am I right? So that we can receive it, and when we receive it, we can receive eternal life. That's the work of Jesus. That's the purpose of Jesus. Not just to save you, but to save you to the other most. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, now notice then. Uh, verse number three. Oh, I read that. Let me read it again. And this is eternal life. That they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast what? Sent. Now notice. I have glorified thee on this earth. Notice what he said. I have what? Finished the work. Huh? What? That thou hast given me to do. Amen? The assignment and the work, the vision that was given unto him caused him to persevere. 
did. Amen. It caused him to be despised, to go through just being despised. It caused him to go through being rejected. Amen. And at this particular time, his worst test was before him. Amen. But he had already made up in his mind. Uh, we got to have our mind made up. Uh, and our heart fixed. Uh, no matter what I got to face, I'm going to finish the work. Uh, no matter what I go through, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold out until the end. There you go. Hallelujah. That's what Paul was trying to tell us. I shall let nothing separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Huh? Not persecution, not, not, not peril, not nakedness, nor sword, nothing. Huh? Hallelujah. Nothing. Thank you, Jesus. What can move you off your square? Hallelujah. What can cause you to give up? Huh? What will you give in exchange for the vision? Huh? Y'all with me? Esau, what did he give up for the vision? Birthright. birthright. And, and he received for his birthright a bowl of soup. Pinto beans. Pinto beans. Pinto beans. <laughs> My God. Pinto beans. Huh? He could have held on to the vision and had a whole cabbage patch of pinto beans. But his hunger, his appetite, his lust took the best of him. Don't let your hunger or your appetite or your lustful desires get the best of him. My God. Man, I'm loving this Bible. Thank you. What you gonna give up? My Lord. You follow? Mm -hmm. Jacob, Jacob, he had his back against the wall because he tricked his brother. Am I right? And and he knew God was calling him back to go back to, to, to that land of Canaan, huh? the promised land. Am I right? So 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 he knew he knew his assignment. Amen? He knew his assignment. But in him completing his assignment, fear was trying to overtake him. Amen? So instead of running, I think, my God, whoo, you know, we got to back this thing up. He tried what he could do naturally to overcome. And ain't, ain't that what we do? We try what we can do naturally to overcome. He said, he said, uh, uh, his, his, his first wife ahead Sent his wife that he really loved, kept her in the back. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you follow me? <laughs> Ain't that wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. There are people so bad. But God, it's messy. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> God still deals with us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And he said, he said all that ahead and some and some and some sheep and some goats. And all of that to give to Esau because Esau had swore that he was going to kill him. Amen? And fear gripped his heart. And he did all of that but still wasn't satisfied. Until he got in touch with God. Huh? Huh? Your, your vision, may, may, you may have some fear at times. Come on here somebody. It, it may make you nervous sometimes. Huh? And, and you may be shaking in your boots sometimes, but you've got to get in touch with God. Yeah. Huh? Only because he's the author and the finisher of your faith. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? So when he prayed, amen, he prayed, he had a vision. God, God, God gives his people a vision. Mm -hmm. He saw the ladders, the heaven opened up. He saw a ladder with the angels ascending and descending. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then the angel came and wrestled with him, didn't he? Yeah. Huh? And angel said, it's daybreak, I gotta go. Huh? And what did he say? He said, he said, bless me. He said, I won't let you go until you bless my soul. 
Uh, and that's what you got to be. Huh? You got a vision before you. And you got to wrestle and pray and, and seek God until he blesses you. Huh? Y'all with me? God changed his name from trickster, Jacob. Huh? Called him Israel. Hallelujah. He told me you have prevailed with God and man. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? When, when vision hits you right, you'll pray. You'll seek God. Amen? You won't allow fear to, to deter you. Amen? Fear will do that. It'll stop you. Amen? Thank you. Y'all with me? You got to realize this. I got to move on. God has not given you the spirit of what? Fear. But love, uh, power, and a sound mind. Am I right? Now, that scripture is huge when, when it comes to overcoming fear. He's saying God has not given you the spirit of fear. In other words, don't allow fear to stop your forward progress. Amen? Believe God. Trust God. Amen? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. All right, now let's move on. Notice what Jesus said. What verse am I in? Four. He said, I have glorified thee where? On the earth. And I have what? Finished the work. That what? That I finished it. See what I'm saying? In the beginning, we started out with Jesus saying, I must be about my father's business. You see that? He had received a vision, an assignment from his father. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's to save those that were lost. Am I right? Uh, he was about it, wasn't he? And then he finished it, didn't he? He completed it. Am I right? He stood to the vision. Though he had obstacles, how many people was trying to throw him off? Not only his inward court, his disciples, not even all, uh, not, uh, not excluding Judas Iscariot, uh, but the Pharisees, Pharisees and the Sadducees, all of them. Yeah. I try to throw him off base. I'm stuck to the vision. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. You gotta stick to the vision. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm trying to get you to see your vision is everything. Yeah. Your assignment is everything. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Uh, it supplies your everything. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because I adhere to the vision, people think I'm rich. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> y'all with me? Thank you. Y'all know I ain't rich, but people think I'm rich. They think you're rich too? They ain't got what? <laughs> Come on here. Because we're sticking with Jesus. Come on here. Hallelujah. And what Paul said, we got to learn how to bow and how to be a face. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. My God. I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. My God. Hey, the Lord feed me. It's a two-edged sword. And see, I feed y'all. He feed me too. Hallelujah. My God. Yeah. Hallelujah. My God. All right. All right. Let's, let's go back then. Let's go back. Um. Go with me here. Uh, Jesus talked about his spiritual food. His natural food was not, not that of uh, meat as people eat. But his spiritual food that gave him strength was to do the will of him that sent him. Amen? Amen. Uh, that has to be our spiritual nourishment, our spiritual food. Amen? Now notice this, because uh, Jesus, he finished the work. The Bible says that Jesus was anointed, amen? He was anointed to do what? Preach. Huh? That casts a vision within us, the preaching of the gospel, amen? I want y'all to hear me. What casts that vision, what God has ordained to cast a vision within you is the preaching of the gospel. That's huge. 
Amen? You've got to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Which is the power of God unto salvation. Uh, the greatest illustration of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the whole armor of God. I'm going to say that again. The greatest illustration, if you want to know what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, study the whole armor of God. That's the greatest illustration of the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as you're studying it, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's deep. That's deep. If you receive it. All right? Now, he was anointed to do that. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me. Amen? To do what? Preach the gospel to who? The poor. He hath sent me to heal who? The broken heart. To preach deliverance to who? The captive. Uh, so that you can recover in the sight, recovering of sight of the blind, to set at liberty, to free you, them that have been bruised by Satan, uh, to preach what? The acceptable year of the Lord. All right? We're almost finished. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now I just want to just want to hit you with this, and then I'll let you go. The, I'm going to talk now, just give you some brief scriptures on the results of the vision of the work of Jesus completing the work. Amen? Um, go with me just for here to Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse 26. Amen? Hebrews 9 and 26. Pastor Duck, can you read that for me? Because if I read it, it's going to take me a while. <laughs> Yep, Hebrews 9, this is the results of Jesus' vision. Receive this. Read. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Uh -huh. But now, once in the end of the world, have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. All right. Jesus, once and for all, this is the benefits of his work. He took away what? Sin. Amen. Thou shalt have a son, and thou shalt call his name what? And he shall what? Save his people from their what? Sin. Your transgressions. Amen. That work is finished. It's complete. It's done. Amen. All right. Go to 1 John chapter uh, number 3 and verse number 8. Man, I love this Bible study. My God. I wish I had another hour. <laughs> Woo! He that committed sin is of the devil. Now notice, he that then doesn't take advantage of what Christ has to offer, who's your daddy? Yeah. The devil. <laughs> it ain't Jesus. It's the devil. Read. For the devil sent it from the beginning. Uh-huh. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. Uh-huh. That he might destroy the works of the devil. The reason why Jesus was made manifest, his completed work, so that he can destroy, huh? Huh? The works of who? The devil. the devil. In your life. And if anything is destroyed, y'all need to study that word destroy. <laughs> if it's destroyed, it can't be put back together. It's obliterated. Amen? Hallelujah. Hey, you follow me? This is the benefit of Jesus. Amen? This is the completed work of the Savior. When he said it's finished, huh? I sacrificed myself for sin and I destroyed the, the author of sin. You follow me? Destroy. Read. Oh, I'm sorry. Go to, then my last one is uh, we can, now don't get me wrong. See, the Holy Ghost told me in the office, he said, don't tell them that this is the, the, the all that Jesus has done for you. <laughs> tell them that there are many more things that Jesus has done for you. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> but go to 1 Peter, chapter number 2 and verse 21. See, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Lord. It brings stuff back to your remembrance. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Then we've done. Uh-huh. For even here unto where ye called, where ye called. Now notice, this is why you were called. Read. Because Christ also suffered for us. Now Christ, he suffered for us. Leaving us an example. Uh-huh. That we should, ye should follow his steps. Now, he's leaving us example that we should do what? Follow his steps. Follow his steps. And tonight we learn that Jesus was motivated and driven by the work, by the vision. Am I right? What did he say? My beat is to do the will of what? Him that sent me. He said, Mama, don't you know I should be about my what? Father's business. Amen? And he went after it. He left us an example that we have to go after it. Amen? Follow in his steps. My God. My God. Come on, give God a praise. That's a good place to leave off. Uh, I can't wait till next week. Thank you, Jesus. All right? Any questions on our lesson? Uh, all right. Uh, Sister uh, Mother Davis. I uh, want to clear something up. When I said that you had complete vision, that was for that time. All oh, right. You know what I'm saying? Because we have, don't we have more than, I mean, we don't have. Yes. A, God gives us different vision for different, at different times for different things. Yes.